I would like now to call upon Vance Taylor, the Chief of California's Office of Emergency Service Access and Functional Needs Office. How's everybody doing this morning? I have the great opportunity to welcome you and thank you for being here. And I also have the opportunity to pay tribute to a true champion for the cause of civil rights for all those with disabilities and access and functional needs, Richard DeVelder. Richard DeVelder was a champion, a crusader, an advocate, an activist, an example, and a defender. His was the cause of civil rights, the plight of the disabled, the hope of the disadvantaged, and overlooked. Born without arms or legs, the world looked at Richard and said no. No, you can't be integrated within mainstream education. No, you can't live independently. No, you cannot attain professional success. No, no, no. And with every no, the world tried to box them in, tried pushing them off to the side, placed barrier after barrier in front of them. And that's when Richard did something none of his doubters expected him to do. He defied them. He defied them by graduating high school, earning his Bachelor's of Arts in Speech Communication from Cal State Long Beach. He defied them by living on his own, swimming on his own, and cheering for the Lakers in a home he earned on his own. He defied them by succeeding at every turn, overcoming every hurdle, busting through every barrier and wall that was placed before him. And then he turned back, looked at me, you, and the numberless disabled people behind him, smiled and said, nothing for us without us. And then he leaned forward, put his chair into overdrive, and blazed an accessible trail for the world to follow. And we did follow. We followed as he was appointed by three different governors and the President of the United States to identify the needs of people with disabilities and those with access and functional needs and integrate them before, during, and after disaster. We followed as he orchestrated the establishment of the office of access and functional needs, an office which I get to now lead. We followed as he told us to develop a personal preparedness plan, to act as though no one was coming to save us, and to evacuate when called upon by law enforcement to do so. And because we followed, we're better prepared for disasters. We're safer. And many of our brothers and sisters have lived through man-made and naturally caused disasters. And then, sadly, he was taken from us. And for reasons we still don't understand, we find ourselves in a world without him. But though he is no longer physically here with us, we continue to be surrounded by his legacy. Indeed, in that sense, Richard will never leave us. We will continue to benefit from his work, to find strength in his example, and to live fuller, more meaningful lives, because in breaking down barriers, he showed us all how to live. Richard blessed our lives and it is my honor and your honor to acknowledge and celebrate him today. We will not forget you, Richard. We will not lose sight of the mission. We will continue to blaze a trail for all to follow because that's what you'd want us to do. Thank you, Richard.